Hi everybody, welcome back. In this short video I will demonstrate uh, how you can uh, extract input from the keyboard, um, store the uh, values into variables, and then uh, manipulate those values and display the output uh, to the screen using uh, Java. Okay, So let's go ahead and get started. I have created or open NetBeans already so we're going to create a new project to do this with All right up here is the uh, create project button All right so uh, we're going to choose a Java application okay next okay we're going to give our project a name and uh, we'll just call this demo okay and uh, project location I like to put it on my desktop so it's easier to find <coughs> so that's where it is here and uh, I'm going to leave this checkbox here uh, checked because uh, I'll let NetBeans create my my main class for me. Okay, so when I click finish, let's take a second. Okay, and uh, we're we're ready to get started here. All right, so um, by default I have a bunch of extra junk here that I don't want, so let's get rid of these comments here, and uh, let's get rid of those comments and those comments. Um, and this needs to be in a package, so let's do that. Okay, so we can see that uh, right that there's a source package here, demo. Okay, well m my class here needs to be part of that package, and we'll ex I'll explain packages in a later video. Okay, but for now, um, since I have a source package in here named demo, I have to make sure that I have a package, this line of code right here, specifying that my class demo belongs to this package named lowercase demo. Okay, so in Java, well actually in a lot of computer programming languages, um, there are two things that we refer to. Uh, one thing we refer to is standard in, also known as S, you know, abbreviated STDIN, right? And that stands for standard input, and standard input is um, the keyboard, basically. Right, then we also have standard out, usually abbreviated as TDOUT, uh, and standard out is usually the display. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to retrieve some information from uh, standard in, and then we're going to manipulate that information in some way, and then we're going to send it to um, standard out. Okay, so to, in order to do that, we're going to need an object to help us out. Um, if you recall from C++, we use the C in and C out objects. Well, that's C++. Okay, this is Java, so we're going to use uh, the system out object and uh, for sending stuff to standard out, and we're going to use a scanner object to help us read some stuff in. Okay, so let's uh, go ahead and get started with that. Okay, so <clears throat> let's uh, first. If we want to use a scanner object, we have to go to the Java library and uh, import it. Okay. In uh, C++, you do pound includes. In uh, Java, we do uh, imports. Okay. So uh, let me see here. Java import. Okay. Java .util .scanner. Okay. So that's going to uh, give us access to a scanner object, which is in uh, the Java library in the util package. Okay. So once we have that, we can create a scanner object, which will allow us to read uh, from the keyboard. So scanner, um, we'll call it uh, input. Okay. Equals new scanner. Okay. And scanner objects require uh, value be sent an argument be sent to its constructor okay and uh, the argument that we're going to send to its constructor is going to be the source of the input that we're going to be reading okay so in this case we're going to be reading from standard in so let's 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 specify that okay so system dot in okay all right so now we're set up to read from the keyboard okay um, so let's define a couple variables here, okay, and we'll define like int 
couple integers, A and B. Okay. In Java, you have uh, data types that are very similar to uh, the ones in C or C++, right? We can have integers, we can have doubles, um, we can have floats, we can have characters, um, you know, you name it, we, we, we have it. But what's nice in, in Java is that, that we actually have strings built right in. Remember in C++, if we wanted to utilize a string object, we had to do a preprocessor directive, pound include string to get access to it. Well, it's built right into, into Java, so we don't have to worry about that. All right. So all we're going to do here, though, is we're just going to ask the user for two integers, and then we're going to add them, and we're going to display the sum of those two integers. All right. We're starting off really simple in this demo. Okay, so if I want to prompt the user um, to give me some information, I have to send uh, some characters to standard out. I have to send it to the display. And so how do we do that? We use the system.out object, okay? And then we use a method in that object um, called print, okay? And so what we can do is we send a string in here, a string literal in here, and that's going to be displayed to the screen. So um, why don't we say something like, give me an integer, all right? And then um, that will display that to the screen. Well, in this case, you know, when I when I compile and run this, what's going to happen is is that we're going to see the output down here. We're not going to create a brand new window like you might see in Visual Studio or um, Code Blocks or something like that. Um, this acts more like it has a similar kind of behavior to what you would expect from um, from uh, Xcode. Okay, so. Um, Right here, I can build the project. I can run the project. That'll compile and uh, run it. Okay, so there we go. Build successful. Okay. Um, now this is kind of weird, right? If I want, if I want to interact, um, once I add the code to do that, I'm going to go down here and I'm going to type uh, my input down in this window here. This is kind of like uh, a terminal window in a way. Okay. So. We did the system.out.print command, right? It displayed, give me an integer, and this is emulating a terminal window, all right? So now if I want to store that value, if I want to retrieve that value from um, standard in, I would need to write code like this, okay? So I'm gonna say A, we're gonna set A to, right? We're gonna use the scanner object and invoke a method, right? And we're gonna invoke the next int method, okay? So what this is going to do is this is going to uh, use the scanner object to retrieve the next integer um, in the keyboard buffer. Okay. So just to show you how it works, um, just to demonstrate it for testing purposes, now I'll show you how we can display the value that uh, that we retrieved. Okay. So. In Java, we have the, the, the uh, out object has a bunch of different print methods we can use, right? I've shown you just the straight up print method here, right? But if we want to um, send formatted output, we can do something like this. Printf will display uh, strings of characters that are formatted, okay? And this is very similar to the way that C does it, okay? So we're going to have a format specifier, okay? So we can say something like this. Uh, the int is, right, we have this format specifier percent, okay, and then we have to use a code that specifies what type of data we're going to be displaying. So D in this case, which stands for digital integer, okay. Then we put a comma here, and then we uh, put the variable name, okay. So basically what's going on here is essentially we have two arguments here you could say right the first argument is uh, the string right that we want to send to the to the screen and these these are format specifiers you know think of escape codes okay? as a matter of fact we can use uh, escape sequences in here as well and they're the same as C or C++ right backslash n will move us to the next screen so what this is saying is um, this line is going to print out the int is and then it's going to display an integer and then move uh, the cursor to the next line, right? And the integer it's going to display 
is what's stored in A. Okay, so let's run this. Okay. So now see the emulation window here, the output window. It's uh, it printed out the give me an integer line. Now it's waiting for me to type something in here. So let's do that. That's what this line right here, line 14, is waiting, is causing the uh, program to wait for us to type in some input. So it's going to extract the integer that I type from the keyboard buffer, from standard in, and store it in A. And then line 16 is going to uh, display the output. Okay, so, well, 13 is the integer, right? So there we have the output. The int is 13. Okay, so let's uh, let's finish what our original program was going to be. Right, we wanted to add two integers, so we'll copy and paste this here. We'll just say, give me a, another uh, another integer. Right? And so this time we will extract from standard in um, the next integer that's in the buffer. And that will be assigned to B. Okay. And then let's add another variable up here. Let's call it sum. Okay. All right. And so then we'll use a mathematical operation. We'll uh, assign the sum the sum of A plus B. Okay. So in Java, you're going to have the same mathematical operators that you do in C or C++, right? Addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, modulus. Um, assignment, statement syntax is similar, rules of precedence, all that kind of stuff. Okay, so we're going to assign the sum, the uh, sum of a plus b, and now we'll uh, we'll display that sum. System dot out dot print f. Okay, the uh, sum of now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use three format specifiers, right? Um, <coughs> And basically what I want to say is the sum of um, whatever the value of A plus uh, whatever the value of B is, uh, is equal to the sum, okay? So I'm going to need three uh, format specifiers, okay? One for A, one for B, and one for sum, okay? All right, and then we'll use an escape sequence to move to the next line. So since I now have three format specifiers here, percent %d, percent %d, %d, percent %d, I need to provide three integers, either variables or literals. Well, in this case, I want to display the contents of A, the contents of B, and sum, okay? Notice that order matters here, okay? Order matters. So this first value that's stored in A will be displayed at this position in the output, B will be displayed in the second position, and some will be displayed in the third position. So let's uh, let's run this and test it out. Okay. So give me a number, let's say 10. Uh, give me another number, that's line 18, 12. Right. So here's our output string. The sum of 10 plus 12 is 22. Okay. So that works great. Now, why don't I show you how we can format our output to a certain level of precision. Okay, so let's say that I wanted to read in some floating point numbers. Let's change our variables to floats, or excuse me, to doubles. And uh, we're gonna need to change our input method here, right? Because we're not reading integers anymore. We need to read in doubles, so let's use the next double method. Okay, and so now, um, give me a number, give me another number. We're going to read in a double stored in A. We're going to read in a double stored in B. We're going to find the sum. We're going to display it. So I can specify how many decimal places of precision uh, I want to display by using a decimal place, right? Decimal point, excuse me and then specifying how many decimal places I want to display. So for A and B, I'll just display one decimal place, and for the sum, I'll display three decimal places. Okay, so let's, uh, so let's run this and see what it looks like. Okay, so give me a number. Um, 
let's do um, 9.99. Okay. Okay, and that'll be stored in A. Let's do another number. Let's do a pi. 0.1459. That'll be stored in B. Right? Oops. What did I do? Oh, I made one little mistake. Um, we have to change this. You're going to get this kind of an error message right here. If you have the wrong format specifier set, right? D is for digital integers. It's for integers. It stands for digital integers, right? But we changed um, our variables to doubles. So these codes have to change too, right? We have to change them to F for floating point numbers, okay? So let's, let's try this again. Okay, so uh, oops. so 9.99 for the first number, and then we'll do pi for the second number. Okay, and now everything works great, right? So um, since our first number in here is uh, our first two numbers are set to one decimal place of precision, right? 9.9 .9 is going to get rounded up to 10. Um, pi is going to get rounded down uh, to 3.1. And then um, finally, our sum variable is uh, specified to three decimal places of precision, right? So that's going to get rounded also, 13.132. Okay, so uh, in this short video, um, I showed you how to get input from the keyboard using the scanner object, and uh, the uh, which you know when we're getting stuff from the keyboard, we were doing a standard in. Um, I showed you how to display stuff to output the standard out to the screen by using the system.out object. Um, I showed you different data types. Um, I showed you how to do a uh, basic mathematic, mathematical operation. And again, Java has the same mathematical operators that C++ and C, many other languages have. Addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, modulus, all that kind of stuff. Um, I showed you how to uh, format output. Right, using format specifiers, um, showed you how to display output to certain levels of precision. Um, introduced you to an escape sequence here, you know, which is just like in C or C++. So, um, if you're coming from those languages, a lot of the stuff's going to be uh, really familiar to you already. So, hopefully, this quarter the, the transition to Java won't be won't be too tough. Right? Java is basically uh, C++ without the sharp edges, we're going to find that it's a really nice language to uh, work with. Okay, so that brings this uh, video to a close. As always, if you have any questions or um, concerns, whatever, uh, you can always shoot me an email or see me in my office hours. All right, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next time.